a fat corner, and it's caused by two things. An unyielding wall covering, which is Philip Jeffrey's Manila hemp, and it is caused by an irregular angle at the corner. In this case, it's an obtuse angle. Not only is the angle obtuse, but it's 90 in the middle, it's acute at the top, and it's obtuse at the bottom, meaning the length of the wall from top to bottom. So let's talk about getting the job done and working with these irregular angles. You can wrap grass cloth around a 90, an 88, or a 92, but once it starts going up to 95, 96 degrees, or much below 90, what's happening is you're, you're causing a very stiff wall covering to start bending, almost like a, a, asking the wall covering to bend in like a, almost like a figure eight. It doesn't do that. This wall covering is very stiff. I mean, for those of you who hang, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who are new at this, it simply means that the angle is, is curved, almost imperceptible to the human eye, but it's curved. And when you're putting, think about when you wear a very stiff shirt that's starched, okay? For the gentlemen who wear a nice collared shirt with starch, you know that when you bend around and you move, that stiff shirt stays in place. You see, that's a great example. I know when I get heavy starch on my suit shirts, the, the shirt wants to stay up if I'm sitting down. So like the shirt might even move uh, or it won't move as I'm sitting down. You know what I'm talking about? So now your grass cloth wants to stay bent in a 90 degree position, but you're asking it to go to 86 degrees. It won't do that. That's the reason for the fat corner. Now, let's fill the fat corner. How do we do that? We come out to meet the wall covering from, from the space, from the wall to the wall covering. And so we fill it up with paste, with a syringe. That's essentially what you're doing. You're not, be, you're not going to be able to move this wall covering now that it's dry. But lo and behold, because it's so stiff, it slid out of the, the area of the corner, just literally by maybe an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths tops, and it causes this ugly, unsightly sagging. So look what I'm doing. I don't want to mar the stitching. I want to cut a hole just slight along the stitching. And then, because I just want to get this needle in there, okay? I want to put the needle into that hole and find myself a cavity, a loose cavity in which I can pump the paste. And you know what you'll see? You'll see the corner fill up with your paste. It's amazing. And you leave it there and you let the backing reacquaint itself with the wet paste so that it forms a bond between your wall covering and the wall again. It's an interesting process. So let's recap. Grass paper is very stiff. And the best way I could compare it is, think about wrapping grass cloth around a beach ball. Think about all of the folds and bumps that you would have in it. It, it just wouldn't do it. Well, the same idea is trying to wrap grass cloth around an obtuse angle. It just is too difficult to do it successfully. So we removed it, and, and now you can see the problem I was dealing with under the wallpaper. You can see a rounded edge. They were doing construction in this home, and the way I finish off uh, plaster walls at the corner, I take my hawk and I push it up against the side I'm working on, where my thumb is. I push it up against that wall 
And then I take my taping knife or my, my plaster knife, and with the hawk, I slide down the wall with my taping knife and the hawk, using the hawk as a fence so that I get a beautiful edge. And so with two hands, I'm sliding downward from the top, pushing joint compound into that corner, using the hawk as my fence. And guess what I get? A beautiful 90 degree angle. But that's not what they did here. So we have to work with it, right? Now look at how beautiful it is. I mean, come on. Look at what we had. Now you'll have a white cloth with you that's just damp, not dripping, certainly not dripping. And you can just horizontally, horizontally wipe down where you were working if you got any moisture on the product whatsoever. Please, lightly damp, but damp enough where you're not going to push the cloth into the grass cloth and then scuff it. You can bruise grass cloth. So I suggest that when you're becoming familiar with working with this product, you take it off to the side, you take a piece off, three feet long, and you practice with it. You practice getting paste on it and wiping it off. And then you practice smoothing it and see what the toleration level is for your particular product. And if you mar the surface, you know what the toleration level is. And you, you know you have to adjust the pressure with which you're working your hands and the uh, moisture you get on this product, if you get any at all. It's not advisable, but it does tolerate some moisture. So just become familiar with your product. So we went from this ugly corner to this beautiful corner. Wow, look at the difference. Look at how tight and clean that corner is. I really like it. I would not be showing you this on video were this not the best possible result to achieve given the circumstances of that corner. That is gorgeous. I really like it. Okay, let's move on to the next corner. Look at this one. This is a, uh, this is really annoying. Look at this mess. And those corners were tight when they were installed. Very tight. I pulled that with my left hand, a strong hand. I pulled it right where you see that cabinet. Look at that. It's a shame. And again, the corner is not 90. And uh, if, you, if you're going to hang manila hemp, particularly manila hemp, it is unyielding. There are other grass cloths that are more textured. Some of them actually look like bamboo. I think you know what I'm talking about. Look at how fine this is. You see that stitching? This is unyielding. This is unforgiving. And so if you master this technique, you can identify where you might have a problem and then charge accordingly. And then you'll know what to do when the problem arises and you won't panic. Okay, I want everybody who views my channel to learn from my experience and my errors. And this way you can do a good job. So according to the slit, now unfortunately this was this getting a little high. You, you, you really don't want to be doing this eye level, but this repair unfortunately is chest level to the average height person. Nonetheless, we we did a little surgery, we slid it open about a quarter of an inch. You know, I would like to do less, but sometimes where you, sli you slice it, it's not revealing an air pocket. It's just near it. So you try to get as close to that air pocket as possible, but you don't want to be in the middle of it and then be pushing up and down because you'll, you'll have paste coming out. So obviously we want to use gravity. We want to go as high as possible with the incision and then we want gravity to pull our paste downward. And when we are pushing on that plunger, we want to be that the, the paste will be going down rather than back back up. Or you you don't want to be cutting it in the middle and then you know you you'll you'll be smoothing up and down, which is 
it's not that prudent, right? So we get as close to the air pocket as possible. Now I'm protecting the grass, but believe me, this actually can tolerate moisture, but I'm showing you this so you don't say, well, Spencer said to do this and I ruined the grass cloth. No. Um, if you're really careful, you can actually do it with that paper, but uh, you, you would have to be experienced with handling this. I do it for my viewers so that they remember, they associate the repair with that paper, and so they won't take a chance if they're new with it. If you're not new with it, you know, just go right ahead and have a clean, damp, white cloth with you. Look at that. Look at how beautiful that's coming out. I love the way that looks. And this is a beautiful condo in Davis Island, a very nice place. Look at the sharpness of that. I mean, you have to love it, right? Look at how beautiful that is. And so you might say, well, where do I get the syringe, Spencer? You go on Amazon. I go to a, uh, a feed store where they uh, take care of all animals, horses and cows, and that's the needle I use needles with which you would administer antibiotics to like a horse, you know, it's, it's got a very, you can see the orifice on that uh, needle. It's pretty big. Now check this out. You see this corner here, right? Look at where I've chosen to insert the needle. Do you see the advantage I have with putting it right there? You look at what I'm holding in my hand. Do you realize that if I didn't have the space, I couldn't fit that large syringe against the wall. I would be going on too much of an angle. So take advantage of these outside corners by using the space on the other, the adjacent side of the wall, the adjacent side of that corner, to put your syringe out of the way. See, if, if you do it straight above the hole, guess what happens? You'll be competing with the fact that there's no space there for that syringe. You know what I mean? So I'm using the other side of the, uh, the, the wall in order to get that uh, syringe in place. You see? See, that now that cloth is brand new. It's white. It's just damp. Now look. I want to show you, you can wipe it down, but go horizontally with the stitching, okay? You're not going to stain the grass cloth. You go horizontal. Now, if you go up and down with that thing, forget it. You will scar the wallpaper, okay? Now, the advantage of going horizontal is you're, you're going with the stitching. Look at that. Don't be fooled by the dark spots. It's just damp. Look at how beautiful that corner came out. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I put a lot of work into these videos, and I greatly appreciate those of you who have subscribed and those of you who visit my channel maybe just for once. Uh, because you needed some advice or you needed something to do with wallpaper. But I greatly appreciate all of you who visit the channel. But please, uh, if you do subscribe, hit the bell so that you get all of my subsequent videos. 